Howdy, Beef Lab Bart here, and welcome! It is Feature Friday on a Friday. So, as you can see, got a gun on my hip there. And, just for the giggles of, I've added on a very simplistic way of knowing what we're looking at here. So, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see next to the health bar, we've got um, rounds left in a magazine, or rounds in a magazine. And they're magazines, they're not clips. Um, and how many magazines that I have left. So, I'm going to drop my pistol out. You see, it goes out of my holster, into my hands, nice and lovely. You can tell on the right-hand corner in the World Outliner, whenever you see Player Base, underneath Player Start, draw the pistol. It is actually an actor in the scene. And I can go ahead and fire. You can see uh, reflections on the wall back there. So when I hit zero on rounds in magazine, I can no longer fire. Oh no. So I need to reload. So now I can fire. And I can do it while I'm moving. Hey, what kind of evil, weird science is that? Now, I haven't added the blend space and all that stuff in yet, but, you know. Reload, everything works while moving. It's blended in nicely. So, you can see now I have zero magazines left, zero ammunition left. I cannot reload and I cannot fire until I achieve more. I has no ammos. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here on the stream relatively quickly is uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in some magazines. And uh, as a pickup item, that will actually increase the amount of magazine that I have left so that I can actually um, reload and continue to fire. And relatively quickly we'll go through the um, the player HUD. All I did was add in rounds in magazine on top and magazines left and numbers and the numbers themselves to get those for the rounds in the magazine, all we're doing is we're casting to our player character, and we're getting the amount of capacity in the magazine, and then we're just plugging that in. For a number of mags, same basic thing, we're just casting to our player, and getting that. If you don't know how to set that for binding, you have your, your text here, you can actually click right there and create a binding for it, and it'll actually create that for you. I've shown this before, but if you don't know how to do it, let me know. Um, weapons rigged. So we're using the Polygon Heist weapons, and we're using... Actually, let's go back to that, because we are going to need... For a pickup item, is there a magazine? <gasps> there are no magazine. There isn't weapons rigged but it'll be a skeletal mesh <laughs> instead of a um, static mesh. Um, yeah. So that's our mag. And yes, I use a 1911 because I, I love 1911s. I own one. I've owned quite a few. So what we'll do is here in just a minute, we'll actually make that a pickup item so we can actually pick it up and increase our ammo count. Um, the animations themselves are derived from the animation starter pack, and I'll cover how I made them work in just a moment. Um, create a sound attenuation and a sound cue. Sound cue, all you do is just select your sound file, right click on it, and create cue and it will create this queue for you and all I did was make sure that this was not looping and added the sound attenuation here. That's all I did to that. Again, I've shown that before, but if you don't know, just speak up and I'll run back through it again. On the weapon blueprint, currently there's nothing in it. Um, it's just there. This is just a cosmetic firing system. Um, yeah all this is involved in that and essentially I'll go through one thing at a time so what happens right now is it's bound to the number one key 
So as you're walking around, everything is normal. And when you actually hit the number one key, what it's doing is you can see the pistols in my hip. It's making the pistol invisible. And then it's spawning the actual gun itself in my hand. And then whenever I hit the number one key to put it back away, there's a slight delay and it destroys the actor that's in my hand and it sets the visibility of the pistol on my hip back to true. So it's just hiding the pistol in my holster. It's still there, but it's just invisible. The reload animation is handled through the animation blueprint. And you can see if you just keep changing magazines, and this is how it would be in the real world, um, is if you just keep changing magazines, you keep losing those magazines. Doesn't matter if they were full or not. So now I have no more freaking mags or ammo. No matter how many times I pull my weapon up and down, I'm just out of ammo. So, whenever I hit the number one key, I'm going to run a flip-flop node. And that to me is, you know, a key factor in this. So, there are some variables. We have weapon variables and pistol only variables. Whenever I go to rifles, I'll do the, the same thing for rifles as well. But I'm creating a weapon in hand, and I'm also creating the can fire is a generic for weapons. And I just created a new category called weapons. Same thing for pistols. You've got a uh, pistol reload, a reload pistol, has pistol, pistol magazine capacity, and pistol magazines. Or how many mags you have, and you know that kind of stuff. So the first thing, whenever you press number one key, it's going to check to see if you have the pistol or not. If you don't have the pistol, then you, you can't do anything. You can't shoot an uh, invisible pistol. You can try, but I, I um, know that it's not going to work because I put that in here. But we're setting it to has pistol. We're setting it to you have it already. Because if you're going to be in a combat zone, you should have already had one. But we can also um, change that out for our branch node and put that there and here as well so that it will check to see if we have the pistol or not. So the pistol could be on the ground, walk over, pick it up, and now we have it in our inventory, and now we can actually use it. But for now, I've just gone ahead and said, yes, we have it. We have the pistol. Um, so there, we set the visibility of the pistol to false by unchecking that box or make sure it's not checked so that it actually hides the pistol on our character. So what I've done is I've added the holster and I've added the pistol to the holster. You can see the pistol is part of the holster. Now, what I'm going to do is get a reference to my mesh and then I'm going to spawn actor the 1911. I'm going to spawn it and it's going to go to my main hand which is part of my mesh. So mesh, get socket transform, the socket name is main hand. That's going to get plugged into the spawn transform and I'll probably end up putting more stuff in here later, but um, that's just going to get it going. You've got to reference to yourself for the instigator, but um, then you get reference to your mesh, and you're going to attach to component and snap to target. Otherwise, it's going to be floating off in friggin' outer space. Okay. And then I created a variable just by dragging off from that, and when you drag off from here, just hit promote to variable, and that's how I created the weapon in hand not really using it right now, but I will be later. So I'm just creating that variable. And then setting the ability to fire. Because right now, if we play, if we didn't have that in here, if you're trying to left click right now, it's not going to do anything. But you know, I still have this available here. But um, that's not affected by the pistol itself. You can't do anything until you actually have it out. <laughs> So, and I like the fact myself that whenever you change your magazine, if you had rounds left in your magazine and you just threw that empty that magazine on the ground, you don't have it anymore. You don't have that part of, as part of your ammo count. So, and I did not do an equip animation. By doing the um, the animation in the animation blueprint and doing a, a, a layered blend, it allowed me to combine these together without having the need for that. And it just smoothly goes between one and the other. I haven't tried to replicate anything yet, so I would have to see what needs to be replicated. But that's going to get the weapon in our hand. 
And then for the shooting portion of it, we'll go back to the reload here in just a minute. It's got to check to see if you have any ammo in your magazine. So it needs to be greater than zero for your magazine capacity or, or your magazine ammo count, however you want to say it. How many rounds you got left in the mag? If you don't have any rounds in your mag, you're not going to be able to do anything past this point right here. And it's going to check, can you fire? Now that's going to be important because you don't want to be able to fire while you're reloading. You can't because there's no, no rounds in the magazine and yeah, it just, just doesn't look right. So it's going to check to see if you can fire and if you can, it's going to get a reference to that weapon in hand, which is the weapon that we have spawned from here, spawn actor from class. Since I made that into a variable, I was able to call that variable here and get a reference to the muzzle, which the muzzle is something that I added to the weapon so that I would have a place to spawn uh, projectiles coming out or if I want to from here. Um, for right now, I'm spawning the emitter, which is a gunshot emitter, which I had to fix the um, Cinti Studios emitter. It was quite broken. Um, I will show what I did in that even though I've already fixed it, but we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But I'm spawning the emitter for the gunshot, and I'm using the muzzle attachment point, even though I've got this right here, attached to component, it's plugged in here, I just went ahead and put that in just to be on the safe side. And I got a reference to the socket location, get socket location, just drag it off from there, and I'm going to play a sound, which is my cue that I created for the, the pistol sound, and it's going to take your magazine capacity, use a decrement, which you drag off from an integer, and just type in DEC, decrement integer, which means subtract one from this integer. So magazine capacity goes down by one, and then it's going to do a rough check with another branch node here to see if it's equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, then can fire equals no meaning that if we try to fire again, it's going to be false and we can't do anything. Hope you're following along with that. Um, if you need me to slow down and go back, just let me know. The reload, press the R key. Do we have the pistol? Basically, do we have the pistol equipped? Um, if the answer is yes, then we're going to subtract one from our number of pistol magazines. Um, but we're, we're actually going to first check to see if we have one or more magazines available. If we have zero, then we're not going to do anything. But we have to have at least one or more magazine to be able to continue on with the reload. We're going to do set reload pistol. And that's going to be important in the animation blueprint, which we'll go to next. Then you're setting can fire to false. So you're not shooting, you're not able to shoot while you're actually reloading. Um, and then we're taking, with that decrement again, we're taking one away from our magazine count and we're setting our magazine capacity back to seven. The 1911, seven round capacity magazine. I could change that to eight if I want to because my 1911 has eight round magazines. but we'd have to make sure that we change that here as well. We could have set max capacity or or whatever, but you know, that's how you're going to change that. Now you can also come in here and do some other stuff, but we're not worried about that. But when we let go, so that was all depressed on the released. We're also checking to make sure that we had it because if we don't, it's skipping that check to see if we have the pistol or not. In other words, it would fail because now, even if you don't have any am am ammunition or magazines, it even though you press the button, even though you're not gaining it through the top portion, um, it just was no point of having it not do that, in other words. Um, it's setting reload defaults, and again, I'll show you that in the uh, animation blueprint. We're setting a 1.35 second delay because of the animation timing, and that was just by me looking at it and guessing until I got it right. <laughs> and then we're setting can fire back to true again. 
So, we needed all of this just to be able to start shooting our pistol. Draw our pistol out and start shooting. And that's only if we have the pistol and we're assuming by doing it this way that we, we do. Okay. Now, the animation blueprint. Doing this in my unarmed animation blueprint and and the event graph. What I've done is, well, first off, clean it up because this looks messy as crap in the default Unreal Engine 4 animation blueprint. So I just rearranged it to look a little bit neater. So that's all default. Nothing's been changed there other than making it neater. Then from there, we cast to our, our player character. And from that, we're dragging off from here, try get pawn owner, to the object portion of, or object reference of our cast to player node. Run a sequence node so that I can run multiple things at the same time. And I'm setting pistol equipped. And that's so that we can go from our regular unarmed animation state to our armed or, or pistol is equipped or, or presented. It's out of the holster. We're aiming our pistol. So I needed a variable that way. So what I've done is I drag off from here to get whether or not we have the pistol or not. And then use a new variable that I have right here called pistol equipped. And it's going to set this to true if our player has a pistol. Again, hope that makes sense. Um, reload pistol. It's going to get that from the player. And if it is true, then we set reloading to true here. If not, we set a default there. I could have done this same thing right here, but I haven't needed to. This was causing a problem, so I had to change it this way. Going to the default. Since I'm using the default third-person animation blueprint. Um, Cafe Mocha. We needed to create a new state. And all you do is just drag off from here and select state, give it a name, and then go into it. And we'll cover this part here in just a moment. Provide the animation system for it, and then we need to know that here, the transition, if pistol is equipped, then we can do this animation. And on the return, if pistol equipped is equal to no or just not boolean, just drag off from your pistol equipped and select not B and just going to use that not boolean. So in the holding pistol, we wanted to blend it. Because if we did not blend this, then what would happen is as we're trying to hold the pistol, our bottom half of our body would be doing only the only this animation. So our legs would not be moving. We would just be sliding around the ground with our feet not moving. So we want to blend the bottom half of our body from whatever we're doing. In this case, we're standing still or we're walking. Um, is going to be controlling the bottom half of our body. But the top half of our body is actually going to be doing this part of the animation. So to do that, what we have to do is a layered blown, uh, bleh, English, a layered blend per bone. And all you're going to do is just drag off from here, or you can actually right click and just type in layered. And it's the only option under layered. So layered bone per blend. Okay. So when you're in that, actually, I'll leave it in there just to experiment with this one and show what you have to do. Um, what you're going to have to do is then take your idle pistol animation, which is what you want. So you see your arms projected out saying, hey, okay, I got my pistol drawn. Um, and I want that to be plugged into blend zero. But the main animation that I want to run is going to be the bottom half of my body, which is the blend space. Um, in this case, third person idle run 2D. So you would just drag that in here and connect that to here. And then we got our idle pistol. And plug that into here. Now to make these two work, 
you click on layered blend per bone and we're going to need to add something here you hit the plus key to add a new member and then you open this up and you're going to change the um, the bone name in this case I know that it's going to be spine 01 it has to be case sensitive as to what was actually in your um, skeleton which I'll show you that in just a moment and we need to change our blend depth to 1 that's all we need to do except for plug this into there and plug in our speed to here that's it for this part hello I said delete thank you so we just plug it into here we get this we set up what we just did and then run a return node back to there now I did reloading here off of holding pistol because I don't want to be able to reload if I'm not holding a pistol. So I just plugged it into there. It's the same basic thing. I mean, same exact thing. So there's no difference. I did not set it to work off of while we're jumping because I don't want you to... You know, you probably can do that. I'm sure you can do it that way. Under the jump loop, you can probably rig it up that way but for right now I just don't have it in enabled so you can't reload while you're jumping so get your pistol out you can jump but you can see the animation is kinda wacky so to get that to actually look right so you're not actually kicking your feet in the air while your pistols out see how you got your jumping loop And now it's kind of wonky. There's always going to be a lot of blending and other stuff going on. So I could go ahead and do it from there. And yeah, I'm just right now, I'm not going to. Um, to prevent that from happening, you can actually go into your player character and under the R for reloading and one for drawing your weapon. If you've ever noticed in the um, jump um, right here, this is the jump itself. Um, you can actually change it to where um, you can create variables like checking is in air. So you can prevent that from happening if you are in the air. But there's, there's ways to polish this up. This is something that I just slapped together in a short amount of time. You can see uh, even in this test map, I haven't even done the map ship folder. So I can do that and that and put that in the map ship, clean it up. So if I added other things in, it's easier to work with. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go to my assets folder and blueprints. This was some of the other miscellaneous crap. And I'm just going to make a pickups folder. And then new blueprint actor. We're going to call this 1911 mag PU. Excuse me, PU. For 1911 mag pickup open that up go back to weapons rigged our magazine plug in skeletal mesh and let's type in magazine roll it over 90 degrees probably gonna have to move it a little bit we'll do a box collision And let's just go ahead and move the box collision up so it's not sticking to the ground. Close enough for me. All right, so with that there, what we're going to do is delete everything from there. Compose to save. We're going to do two things. First off, we're going to do a new variable called can 
respawn and we are going to change this to respawn for the category and then we're going to click right here to expose it because I like exposing myself. So this is going to, we're going to set up a respawn system and we can pick whether or not we want this this magazine to actually respawn or not. And let's go ahead and build um, let's change the name of that category. Let's just call it um, magazine data. You can call it monkey penis. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> So we're going to create another one called um, number of mags and change that to a integer and change our category to magazine data. Compile and save. We're going to change that to one as a default. Compile and save. So now it's always going to be a minimum of one um, there. But you can change this to a hundred so when you walk over you're going to get a hundred magazines if you want. So, let's go with our box collision, on component, begin overlap. And what we're going to do here is go from other actor and cast to our player character. I call mine player underscore base, always have, just something I do. Um, from here, what we're going to do is since we're just going to grab these magazines, we're not going to check to see if we need them or not. We're not going to set a max magazine capacity yet, but we could. That way, if you only want your player to be able to carry five magazines, then you can check to see if the player already has five or not um, and handle it that way. But we're just going to assume that our, we don't have a magazine capacity that we have to deal with. We can carry as many magazines as we want. So we're going to cast to that, and we're going to get pistol magazines. We're going to get number of mags, and we're going to plus. So it'd be integer plus integer. So what we're doing here is however many magazines are there we're gonna get all of them at one time so we're gonna get our our magazine count from our player and increase it by that number okay now we can do that and what will happen is the magazine will just stay there forever so we need a way of dealing with it afterwards pick up so I throw this on the ground here and where the hell did I put it? This is why I like throwing in tables. So let's actually, so that I know where it is. Um, zero, zero, put it right here in the center. All right, so there it is on the ground. Kind of hard to see because it's gray on a gray background. But if you look at um, magazines left, I can walk over it. And it's not doing anything. Yo, what's up? Magazines left. Oh, um, sorry. From here, we need to also do a set number of pistol magazines to that number. Sorry. I forgot a step. Oh, no. Gonna move them kind of quick here. So we're setting the number of our pistol magazines to what we had before, plus however many that are here in this pile, and that's our new magazine count. So now, if we come over here and magazines in the middle, now I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every time I walk over it, it just keeps reappearing. So to make it more visible, let's um. See if we can move it up in the air a little bit. Can you see it? Can you see it? See it right there? Right there. What we want it to do is we want it to disappear whenever um, our player interacts with it. So from here, 
on begin overlap. What we'll do here is we already have a variable called can respawn. It's set to false, but we're going to get this and we're going to check to see if the magazine can respawn. Run a branch node, connect that in, and if it can respawn, then we need to do a few things here to make it go away and then come back. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take the magazine and we need to let's toggle visibility to it. And I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to need a, another one here soon, but not yet. But we'll go ahead and plug it in. It'll be there for when we need it. So once we toggle our visibility of the magazine, we want to also get the box collision. Yo, what's up, man? We want to get this box collision, and we want to deactivate that box collision so that it's no longer active. Even though the the we won't see the, the magazine floating in the air, the box collision is still going to keep affecting it. So we need to turn off that box so that we can prevent it. Oh, we need another um, variable as well, which will be respawn delay. Do we need to go in magazine data? There we go. Um, so make sure you click on the eyeball here so that these are visible. So I'm going to run a delay. And then this actually needs to be a float. I, I don't make the rules. I just, I just work here. Respawn delay, we're going to set it 3 seconds as a default. But that way we can actually change it whenever we want to. So I'll plug that into here. So now we, you, you as a person yeah um, I'll, I'll recap here in just a minute of what we got and I'll show you what, where we're at now um, since you, you came in late but it's all right all right so we're going to toggle our visibility back on again and then we need to reactivate our box collision so I'm just going to get another reference to the box and I am going to activate alright so if we can respawn do that if we cannot respawn then well just destroy actor alright so recap this um, whenever our player walks over the box collision which is our player is here we're getting the number of pistol magazines we own. We're adding it to the number of magazines that's in this pile and setting our current magazine count to that new number. We're going to then check to see if the magazines can respawn. If they cannot respawn, if we choose not to, then they just go away. But if they can, what we're doing is... It's actually... Sorry, it's going to bug me if I don't move these around. It's going to turn off the visibility of the magazine. It's going to deactivate the box collision. It's going to run a delay based on how many seconds we set in our respawn delay. And then it's going to turn the visibility of the, the magazine back on and reactivate the box. So should be good to go. So if we look in here in our map, our magazine that we have set, we now have three things we can edit. Can it respawn? No so this won't be used so I'm going to do control C and control V and I'm going to add a second magazine in here um, there and this one magazine 2 it can respawn and it'll come back in one second let's go back to magazine 1 that we have placed in the world control C control V again just as an example mag for the other way 
is we can actually change it to can respawn, respawns in three seconds, but there's five magazines in it. So let's hit play. So walk over here. I know their magazines are hard to see. So this one, if we walk over it, um, we want it to get it and respawn in three seconds. I know it's really hard to see. Um, we got 10, and then we got 15, it respawned, we got 25, 30, We're picking up five magazines every freaking time. So, reload. So our active count. Nah, I'll just recap. Oh, I forgot to reload before I rehalted my weapon, so let's reload and then put it back in there. So, So this one's respawning. Um, everything's working. I know it's kind of hard to see these because they are gray. Um, I guess I could have just made them oversized or something like that. Um, I mean, I could take the magazine and make it huge. <laughs> And since I'm being goofy with it, might as well add in a rotating movement. Might as well, right? So we'll grab this guy and add it and respond. All right, so we get the picture here. Um, delete those two. I'm gonna put this back to. You know, I just leave it the way it is. Um, so this does not respawn. When I pick it up, it just goes away. All right, so to recap on this. Um, Currently, right now, I have it set up to automatically know that we have the pistol. I mean, I could create a, a the same thing I just did for the magazine pickup for the pistol pickup, and then set up another variable system to, to say that we don't have the pistol until we actually walk over and pick it up, and then it will set a, a Boolean variable saying, yes, I have the pistol. But, you know, this is me. I always got an 1811. No, right there. I'm looking at it. Um, so when I hit the number one key, it pulls the weapon out. Hit it number one key again, it puts it back away. If you notice that, um, I guess it could have moved the hand back a little bit in the idle animation, but with the the normal equip pistol animation, it wants to draw from the back. And I don't know anybody. I, I don't know anybody who carries a pistol on the small of their back anymore. 15 years ago, that was like a, 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 a fad for a short amount of time, called the SOB holster, or small of the back holster. I, I, I carried that holster like that for about a month, and gave the damn thing away, and, and went back to regular hip carry like that. Um, I carry 1911s, so I don't appendix carry. Think about this kind of stuff for real whenever you're, you're designing your game stuff. But, but I have no equip animation. I have this animation and I have this animation and by putting it in the animation blueprint it automatically will transition between the two and I didn't have to do anything so when I hit the number one key it's also t toggling the visibility or turning off the visibility of the pistol in my holster the pistol is there I'll explain this and then I'll go back through and show the blueprint again so um, I physically have the holster attached to my body, and I physically have the pistol attached to the holster. You can see I've got it attached to my hip, so it moves as I'm running, but it stays relative to the same location. You could attach it to the, the spine and then position the holster, and it doesn't move with your leg, 
but it just seems a little bit more realistic to have it move a little bit as you're, you're moving. So to get it to work while moving, we did the layered blend. And the same thing for the reload animations as we're running around. Because what happens is I didn't like the fact that, you know, it didn't look right. Go to character. So I'm only running the animation for third person idle and all the normal third person animations. And all I've done is add in, and I'm not even using the equip pistol standing. In fact, prove I'm not using it. Bye. I'm deleting it. Um, of course, Unreal Engine 4 hates that, even though it's not being used anywhere. Nowhere is it being used. It still took that long to frickin' delete everything. Um, I'm only using the idle pistol and the reload pistol animations along with my normal third-person animation blueprint. I do, and I did get those animations from the animation starter pack, but I don't know if you can tell, but these are all still bound to the actual freaking um, UE4 mannequin that comes with that. I'm not using any of that stuff. I just use those two animations. Let's close the asset folder. Um, so I'm just using the reload and the idle animation and then doing a blend. Inside the event graph and inside of our player, the only thing I did, again, was this stuff right here is all the default stuff. I didn't do anything but reorganize it. Bugs me how dirty it looks. It's a dirty boy. I don't like dirty boys. I like dirty girls, but not dirty boys. Um, but yeah, cast to player base, which is my player character, and I'm getting the object reference from try get pawn owner, so I'm just dragging it from here to here. And then I'm running a sequence node so that I can break this into two components. Is the pistol equipped? Then do this basic animation system, and then reloading. Am I reloading or not? And I'm getting this information from the player. So I'll go ahead and open up the player as well. But those variables are here in the has pistol and um, reload pistol. They're inside of the actual player blueprint. And I'm dragging from here and getting off. That didn't sound right. Hey, I'm getting off. Um, <coughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm dragging from this. And I'm getting whether or not I have the pistol equipped or not. And has pistol from the player. I created two new variables here. And now I can go into a, a brand new project and open this up and start from scratch if you want. It would be easier for you to follow along from scratch so you know that there's no made up behind the scenes science. I can open up a blank project with third person template, add in animation starter pack, convert those two animations, and go from there. The only reason why I did it this way is so that I'd have it all together with a pistol. I don't have another pistol that I can just shove in there quickly. But with the reloading part, I'm asking yes and no. Because I needed that state separately, so I used a branch node. Going into the um, anim graph, since I'm using a third-person animation blueprint, you've got just this part is the norm, except for these two right here. Um, this is all normal, and what I've done is holding the pistol. At, do I have the pistol equipped? Now, if I'm doing this for rifle, and I can go ahead and do this for rifle if that would help out a little bit. Because these two, all this right here, happens off of the idle run configuration. And from here, if I want to do the rifle version, I would just drag off from here and just and create a new state. And then my transition to and from transition to is pistol is equipped. And then um, transition from is pistol equipped equals not boolean, not B, uh, not boolean, so that I can go back into my regular animation. Doing that alone allowed me to go to and from the animation with no problem whatsoever. So, 
I said we created all this system right here just for pulling my pistol out, reloading, and shooting. And that's not even doing anything with the shooting mechanism itself. Because I still haven't done the blend space and all that stuff. There's a lot more involved, but this is getting the basic setup for um, the reloading mechanism and that kind of stuff. But done through the animation blueprint. But I wanted to in include that. Essentially, I've already fixed my skeleton so that I can retarget these things. I have a temporary folder, and I'm going to go ahead and delete these three because I don't need them anymore. And I'll pick out from the animation starter pack. See, there's no pistol aim down sights, and it's like pistols were an afterthought. You know, you could do the um, equip rifle standing, I'm not even going to use that. Fire rifle hip. Um, yeah, that's just an extra. But let's just say here, um, let's do shotgun. And I don't know, you got idle rifle hip. We'll do that and try to find the reload. Well, actually, um, I need to do a death animation. So I'll show the death, but if you wanted to, you gotta let me know and I will. I'll, like I said, I'll start from scratch. I'll run another video specifically after I get done with this one, take like a five or ten minute break, and then I'll come back and I'll stream again, and I will just do a, a blank project with nothing. I'll see if I can find, I'm sure I've got some kind of weapon around here somewhere that I can throw into it so I can just basic. Um, in fact, there's actually um, got, and then, well, yeah, I've got, got something I can use. But I can do it from scratch if you want me to. And just I'll do it in a different stream. I'm just going to wrap this one up with doing a death animation. Um, but I'll show the process on converting it over. I mean, I'm just going to use death one, and come over here in my temp folder. Don't have to. Well, no, I, just go right here. Retarget animation. Use my SK polygon. And I'm going to change the location where I want it to go so that I want it where I want it to go. So we're just going to retarget it. And it totally did not go where I wanted it to. So, death one. We have a death animation now. Alright, that's fine. Um, in the previous video, we started creating a death custom event, um, and all we're doing here is on event any damage, it's receiving the damage. Now the thing is here, um, and we'll do our damage with this. Um, I've got it set up to where you go into this view. You actually have a crosshair, and it's tagging. Um, so what I need to do is go from here, and we don't need that. We're asking if our player can take damage, because that's something we're going to use later on for another deal for cheat codes. And then, if they can, we're going to apply 25 damage. Um, weapon in hand. Let's see if we can plug this in. Come on. So, we're going to apply damage. Let's see. 
two players, new pie, and I'm just going to move the server off the screen. So what we see here is the um, the client, and by the way, it did not give the same. I just picked up the magazine with the client. So you can see the magazines on the server did not get any change there. So, um, as you're looking at the health bar on the client here, going as the server and just check to see. No, I haven't done the, um, the damage yet. Um, so 125. See, I put it in and take it out. Put it in, take it out, and um, so if it any damage it gets our health, we're subtracting the damage from our health, setting our new health to whatever. And if it's equal to zero, is it less than or equal to zero? Then setting it to zero, running our death animation. Probably forgetting something on here. But we'll we'll come back to that here in just a minute. I'll I'll trigger it some other way. But death. Um, let's clear everything off of there. So when we die, what we want to do is create a new variable is dead, and we will go ahead and set is dead to true. So, from there, let's go into here, come from idle run, and actually let's go to the event graph. Let's add another pin to our sequence node. Get from our player is dead. From here, let's go ahead and run a branch node from our sequence node. So we're going to check if the player is dead or not. And we're going to set it one here, death, so we have a new variable. And we are going to set death. To true and false on these. So, if the player is dead, then we're going to set death to true. If not, we're going to set it to false. So you can go to the um, the animograph, drag off from here, add a new state, call it death. And we're going to go into that really quickly. Grab our death animation, plug it into there, and that's that. To get to this, grab death, drop it in there, and that's it. And to come back from being dead to being alive, go in here, grab death, get, and then drag off from here and not B for not boolean. So if we're not dead, we're not doing the death. It's as simple as that um, to go to that death sequence. Um, but we also want to do something else as well. Um, we need a respawn location. So our death, we set that to be true. Let's go ahead and run a delay of, you know what, screw it, respawn delay, and I'm going to put that as a float, even though it would be best to use as a integer. We're going to set this at 5 seconds, and plug that in there. So we're going to create our respawn delay. And then we also need to know where we're going to respawn. 
So, we need to go back to our event begin play. Add something in here. Um, we're going to need another variable. So for event begin play, we want to know where we started off. And respawn location. Now I'm going to change this over to be a should probably be a transform yeah I'm gonna make it a transform so we get our respawn location and actually we need to set that set respawn location but let's go ahead and do this grab a reference to our mesh Get actor no world transform. So we're gonna get our world transform. So when we first spawn into the map, bang, there's our respawn location. It's it's setting it right then and there. So that's gonna be it. You could also break this down into a separate variable or a separate custom event for respawn but I'm just gonna put it all inside here so death when we die after our respawn delay we need to of course we set death dead is true and then we're gonna do a delay and we're going to set actor transform but we actually need to set is dead to false so that we go back to our normal animation state there's so many different ways you can do this by the way our new transform is going to be our respawn transform or respawn location I guarantee that's probably going to be a problem because that location is going to be based off of zero, zero, the zero location, which means then when we respawn, we're actually going to respawn in the ground. So I'll show you how to fix that in just a minute. Assets, blueprints, um, let's do a new actor, kill, pad. We just want something to kill us. Add a component, cube, change the Z height to 0.1, and we're going to add another component of a box collision, and change the size 1.5 by 1.5. No, ass clown. 1.5. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm gonna do this a couple different ways. I'm just gonna do this as cast directly to my my player character. Get player character reference. So we're gonna cast to our player. We're going to. Let's just do damage. Um, Let's get our health to health. Float minus float will do 100 damage because we only have 100 health. And then we're going to, you know what? Let's just set our health. Set our health to zero. Good enough. Kill pad.
So there, it took it to zero. Event any damage. Okay, it's it's being applied to there. You know, just to ensure that this is actually going to work, let's just call the death. Let's just kill the player with this. It's a kill pad. We might as well kill him, right? Excuse me? Um, why is that an event begin play? Good. God, you're such an idiot. Um, <laughs> let's do this the right way. We don't need you, because this comes from other actor, goes to you, you go to there. Good God Almighty. Anyway, oh, why the hell I did it on event begin play? So, boom, we're dead. You can see weird shit happening there. So, we need to continue on with our death and set up a few more things here. Um, in our death sequence here, we need to... Let's move you. And you need to teleport. We're going to get a reference to our character movement. And dyslexia re rears its ugly head. I don't remember if I can use deactivate and reactivate, or if I have to do it. No, I actually have to do it a different way. Um, set movement mode to none. And then plug that in. Then after this, after we set undead to fault and respawn, then get our character movement, set movement mode to walking. So we're setting it to fault. Um, we need to probably go in there and clean that up a little bit too. Boom. Can't move. And it's not moving me. Alright, sorry. Um, what we need to do here is instead of running... Going to death is fine, but coming back from death... Um, you know, that'll be fine for now. Um, go back into our player. We're setting his dead to true. Doing this. I'll move you. I want to move our location. Very last thing we want to do is, is be out of this. Get the fuck up there. Damn. <laughs> um, Alright, so... I may have to do a manual set to self there. But it's not teleporting us. We want it to actually... This is our respawn location right now. So do this. We should die. And then... Okay, I see what it is. Alright, we're dead. We do the animation. We're going to have to run a separate delay before we do all this. Um, you see what's happening here is it's running that animation continuous. So once I hit it, watch, it stops us. 
does it second time third time because our respawn delay if I change the respawn delay it's set to five let's set it to one I have a good fix for this so it does it teleports us and we're back to action again so that's what the problem was is the uh, respawn delay which I want to keep that to three but what I want to do is, is kind of separate this a little bit more I want to teleport and then I want my you know I want to respawn delay I want to be dead on the ground and then I want to teleport and then so we just need to trigger that animation one time let my coffee get cold animation so um, should be able to fix that in here setting death true to be able to get us there it's going to run the animation um, loop animation compost and save we don't want it to continuously loop so we, if all we're dead should only do it one time and then it teleports us and then we're okay so boom we're dead and we're good to go so we'll go back in here respawn delay is three seconds let's change that back to five so we get killed and then five seconds later we respawn back to our location so this goes along with um, the videos I did on setting checkpoints so if you set a checkpoint over here then okay now this is my respawn location so as I'm going around and suddenly I get shot oh, I'm dead it'll go to my new respawn location but any questions on any of this so far so we're at the hour mark and it's where I usually like to stick these for for this Oh, gotta reload. Now I haven't set up the blood and spaces or the aim spaces. So you can watch our, our magazine around left in our magazine, hit reload, and it also deducts the magazine. And I mentioned I would show you how to fix that particle effect really quickly. The particle effect in the Polygon Heist Pack for the gunshot. What was happening is it was just just staying continuous. And it's a pain in the ass. If you click on the particle effect, you open it up, select required, by clicking right here on this yellow block. You got musket fire and musket smoke. But just click on the required scroll down a little bit and you've got um, emitter loops change that to a one click save and you're good to go go to musket smoke required scroll down change emitter loops to one hit save and you're good you have to do it that way once you click on one click required scroll down make your change hit save now the emitter duration was also set to 0 0.2 I changed it to 0 0.02 and then hit save and it's good to go so now whenever you're firing you get that nice quick flash the smoke lasts a little bit longer but it doesn't continue on forever Alright, so I'm empty. I hit the R for reload. Oh, 
There's a spare magazine, so now I just got one more mag. Can't keep shooting because there's no rounds left in the magazine. Hit reload. Reload. Well, the reload, um, you're having trouble getting it to, to actually play. Using a montage. I mean, I'm not using a montage right here. All right, we'll quickly recap through everything one more time. One more time, so people keep popping in here, and who am I to say no? Except an old guy. Um, all right, the only animations that I'm using on my character are the third-person animation blueprint, the default third-person animation blueprint. Um, I've added a death animation, and idle pistol, and a reload pistol. And as you can see, I'm using a regular third-person animation blueprint to just walk around, interact normally. So everything is good to go. But if I decide to pull out my pistol, I don't have to stop. My, my lower half of my body is doing a completely different animation than the top half of my body. So that's a thing. You notice the... Um, Muzzle flash is spawning from the muzzle. The sound is coming from the muzzle. And notice there's no pistol in my holster until I actually tell it to go back in my holster. And there you go, it's back in my holster. I draw it again, and it's gone from my holster, but it's in my hand. Back in my holster, in my hand, back and forth. And if you notice on the right-hand side of the screen, I don't know where my gun's pointing right now, Player base is the name of my character, and you can see that um, 1911 is attached to it as an actor. And now it's gone, deleted. So, with only three additional um, animations added. Alright, all of this is the shooting for the pistol. All of that. All this goodness. Now, we know that we have the pistol by default because I've got it configured to say that I always have a pistol. Because, just like real life, I always have a 1911. So, um, so when I press the number one key, it's going to run a flip-flop node. Um, it's going to set has pistol equipped. Has pistol should be listed as has pistol equipped. I just didn't change the name of it yet. Um, if you look at my character, you can see the holster is attached to the player via a socket that I created for the holster attached to the right thigh. The pistol then is here, well, there's your holster. The pistol is equipped or attached to the holster. It's just cosmetic. Okay. So what I'm doing is, whenever I'm trying to draw my pistol, hit that number one key, I'm turning the visibility of that pistol to not visible. I am spawning an actor from class, and the actor is the 1911. It's an actual blueprint that was created. Okay, And the, the transform of where it's going to be attached is, I'm going to get a reference of my from my mesh, here, just drag off from here into the, the blueprint. Get socket transform. The socket is called main hand. That's the name of, of my, my handhold. Okay. Self plugged in the instigator. Um, so from the spawn actor from class, attach to component, and I'm using a mesh reference here to the parent. Socket is main hand and these two are plugged in together. Actually, they're not plugged in together. Yeah, they are. Um, I also drag off from here, and I created a or promote to variable, 
and I call that weapon in hand and then I'm turning on the ability to be able to fire okay if I don't have the pistol and I cannot you know or whatever this is when I press number one key if I don't have the pistol if I don't want it in my hand running the flip-flop to put it away the set has pistol defaults that kills off some of the stuff here um, a set can fire defaults so I can't keep shooting running a 0 0.15 second delay that's the the time to put it back in the holster I'm turning on the visibility of the pistol and I'm getting a reference to the weapon in hand which is the variable of this variable reference to that and then destroy actor so I'm removing the actor of the 1911 it no longer exists in the world so that's how I'm doing my weapon equip and put away Uh, we were doing widgets the other day, so that would have been a great time to ask those. Um, let me finish doing a recap on this, and then I'll, I'll talk about the other uh, widget stuff. Because I had to add stuff in there uh, from uh, widget elements. Um, event dispatchers. So you were, you were trying to call it data. For, break, it, break down the question a little bit more of what you're talking about and what you're trying to do because there's different ways of, of getting that information back and forth um, like creating a child and that kind of stuff uh, reload animations I'm running all these in the animation blueprint instead of actually running montages I've been having difficulties with montages working correctly in, in these newer versions of Unreal Engine 4 I don't know if it's just me getting old or if something has changed, but I'm, I've been having difficulties running animation montages. You know, where you, you just, you know, like play montage or get current montage, play montage, play animation montage. You know, you get the two, you get stop and a montage. Um, I don't have any montages in here, but I was having issues with both of them, and I could not actually get the montages to pr pl to play to play correctly. Um, yeah, I can. Um, you know, you just gotta catch me at the right time and the right place. And you, Discord's the best way to to keep in touch on stuff like that. You know, just. Check with me in on the regular Discord channel, in my, my regular Discord channel, to see if I'm here. I'm, you know, being old and finicky about a lot of crap. Um, I don't, I don't like just random DMs. I don't accept friend requests. Um, you know, I'm really weird about things because I'm old and grumpy. So don't take offense if I get mad if you send me a DM without asking me, hey, I'm going to send you a DM, or if it's not a private thing then I, I don't want to be bothered with a DM, you know. If it's just normal, average, everyday UE4 questions, like um, whatever, then just ask them in my Unreal Engine general UE4 section, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But doing private sessions, yeah, I mean, I could sit there and do on Discord um, a private call and share my screen and just spitball my way through and show you what's what on it. It's better to do one-on-one -on -one like that because it's live. There's no four or five second delay and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's just changing variables and, and bindings. Um, we look at um, currently like right now the very simplistic way I'm doing right now for checking how many rounds left in the magazine and how many magazines I have left and how much health that I have is if you look at my my player HUD just for testing things for right now I've got eight rounds in the magazine six magazines left and then whenever I draw my pistol you can see it's a live count of what's going on 
So those are updating from that widget. And no, I didn't add any empty click sounds, by the way. But you can see those numbers are changing. Um, just because of, of that. Mm, could be possible. But you see, I can't reload, I can't shoot, I can't do anything, so I just put my gun away. Um, but to get stuff like that right there, all you're doing is creating a... As, as an example, my health percentage is based off of right here. But if you want to say, okay, I want another widget to display here. Um, but you want information to be stored. Well, just create new variables inside your... your this is a, my main player at HUD. So you can create new variables here. Um, variable being um, mag count change that to an integer and then getting that information from here and then you know you can use this across the board I mean you can't pick it up right here just yet but um, if I want to put a big number right here and grab text and text big number okay create a binding now I've already got these here but I'll create a new binding and I can grab this And just plug it directly across there. And it'll convert it over to a, uh, a text value. Alright, so I have not set a value to that number. It's just a number floating in the air right now of zero. So if I wanted to add functionality to that, that itself. So I click here. I've already created a binding for that. So how can I actually get that information to be reflected. So I can go back to my graph and regular event graph. Um, you know, there's nothing else in here in the event graph at all for my player on. So that right there, I'm just getting that mag count information. If I want to get that information from a player, then I would just cast to that number. Um, but let's actually go back in here, and close that, go here, here, let's get rid of that, so I'm not cluttering up my HUD. Um, for an example, um, let's go to save all, come on, my main menu, whatever. You look at this. It says go connect Steam dummy, and this is a blank image. This is pulling data from an actual another widget. This widget right here is going to be my player info, and that player info just says go connect to Steam to play. It just has that blank white image. You got a reference to the Steam avatar and this, but there's nothing here. There's nothing in the event graph, so you just have two variables. So how's it getting this information? So what I've done here is Steam Avatar is actually the name of uh, an image. It's a blank image. And I don't even have a binding set in here. There's nothing attached to it. And this connect to Steam to play, I mean, that's just, you actually never even see that. Uh, the only time you ever even see that is, well, you don't. It says go connect to Steam dummy. It says something totally different. But it shows that image. And 
my main menu, you can see this is a widget. If you click on it right here, I've added a widget inside of a widget. So I'm displaying that widget. See, connect to Steam to play. You see that there. Close down some of this extra stuff here. Um, things like um, chat. When you, you enter a new chat, you're entering it into a new widget itself, and you're just creating a child, and then what you're doing is... Where is it in here? Now, create server. Now, find server box. Um, this right here, it's actually going to server content. And that server content is actually information that is from here. So in this case it's um, giving you a join button, it's giving you the the name of the server, and I used to have the ping listed right there, but this is also another widget. And the information that is gathered in here is from the session information. And it's just being added in there as a child. I mean, I'm not going to show you the guts of this because this is a product that I sell. Um, this is my sole source of income here. So it actually, so right now, it's not working because I'm not actually connected to Steam. Um, whenever I am finding, nothing shows up here because there's nothing to show because it, it hasn't found one. I could click on find, it'll do a refresh, and if nothing else shows up, nothing else shows up. But if I choose, I just want to go ahead and host one. Uh, and this is the old version, but this is the, the version that I still use quite a bit. You make a new map, and there you go. I still haven't done the, um, the transitions on the, the jump. But... Because the third person animation blueprint, the jump is done differently than it is on the animation starter pack. Both made by Epic, both using two different methods of jumping. Um, they're similar, but just different enough to be a problem. So, um, see, so go connect to Steam Dummy. It only, and I am connected to Steam. So the only way that's going to actually work is if I actually run this in a standalone mode, standalone game, because then it's going to actually be like running the actual game itself. You can see it pulls that information in, that pops up. So it's actually using Steam architecture in this. So now hit multiplayer, host and find, all works great. And let's host a game. And there we go. Yep, lovely. Hit escape, go back to the main menu, and in game. So you can actually call widgets inside of a widget. Um, I'm going to close this project down before I keep screwing with things. And another one. Give me just a moment here. Let's slow this project for just a moment. This has got a lot of unfinished stuff in it too, so... Hey, go away. Thank you. Um, I didn't mean to do it that way, but whatever. So I like this guy right here, all my Steam functionality, the character setup. Pick a character. This isn't finished yet, but um, you pick your character and then go into single player and, and go. It, it will, when I get done with it, it will retain your player character and persist over maps and things like that. Uh, Totally an unfinished project here. Main menu. Let's 
Could remember. Let's see. Test map. No, this wasn't the project I was thinking about, but. There was another one I was doing where I added in a new element. Not a new element, something's been there. It was um, actually adding in a web interface, a uh, website can be actually added directly to as a, an element. You could, okay, if you've got a, a player phone and when they hit a button on their phone it goes full screen or just works on the phone itself and actually shows the um, a website you actually browse Google whatever you want um, there we go it's just a matter of pulling in elements it just like I said when it comes to the um, Erling David Tufto um, If you're just wanting to change the number between widgets, it's just setting variables, plus one or or what have you. Hey, what's up, man? Oops. No, it was actually the main menu map. Yeah. So that's actually um, showing an actual YouTube video, an embedded YouTube video directly inside the uh, the widget. So as you're creating your, it doesn't have to be a YouTube video, but you see, I have control of the. the I can pause it. Ooh, I can go to this one right here. Oh, wait. I, I don't think I'll go to that one right now because that's actually a live link to this video. I don't think that would... Well, I gotta do it. Just to try. Well, let me go to it. Mm, I was hoping it would let me go to it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you have control over the video. You can fast forward. You know that kind of stuff. You can pause it, stop it. I'm normal. Um, let's solo play and actually go in here. Um, it was actually also setting up the um, you know, red character, white character, blue character. Close the window, and that's actually working on the individual map. But like I said, I'll, I'll finish the character creation to save game functionality into one. But this is actually the lobby map, and, and this particular one, whenever you're in here goofing around, setting up your player, okay, I like this, I want to change my character name, you got this character creation station, you hit that, see the little background blurred, red, close, but I'll have all the information set up in here to where you can set your character up inside a lobby, walking around, just chilling out, having a good time, and then when you're ready, um, say maybe walk over here and step on another pad and it changes your status to ready when everybody else which I think if you're going to use the UA4 mannequin the icon in the middle of the chest you can change the color separately so do it this way um, change the color to green if you're ready or something like that that's something dumb but yeah when everybody is ready and everybody's walked over a little pad to say that they're ready then it'll just automatically teleport everybody to the new map and or the new area of the map because you know this this could actually just be a place where everybody's trapped a lobby area of your map just like the battle royale um, that nobody bothered to play and test and and say what they liked about it or not I mean, it's in the BBG demo section on my on my forum, on my forums, on my Discord. Uh, for people to download and, and give me a feedback on it, and whether I should keep developing on that or not. And nobody said shit, so I just said the hell with it. Um, 
I said, if people don't keep up with me on other other things like this, then I'm not going to keep working on something that nobody's talking to me about. Or if I ask a question and I don't get a response, I'm just not going to keep working on it. I got so little to do with my life. I mean, so much to do with my life that, um, you know, I can keep busy. I'm not going to be doing anything on the computer tomorrow because I'm going to be gone most of the day tomorrow. But, yeah, I mean, if, I mean it's there. Just, it's free to play, free to, to pick up on. I mean, I'll, I'll load up the project really quickly. And um, cause I, I thought I'd actually completely deleted the project. And thankfully, I saved it. Um... Because, you know, everybody knows how much I love uh, Fortnite. Yeah, it's been been sitting in there. Um, BBG demos. Um, 6.14 of 2019. Um, oh, wait till this finishes loading this project and I'll slide it in there and show you on the BBG demo section of my discord channel 614 2019 the latest version of the battle royale game from the, the live streams it's right there all you gotta do is click on that some Google Drive location download it and check it out um we got two maps that I used. There were the the Battle Royale pack from Cindy Studios and the uh, World War II pack from Cindy Studios. So I'm using all Cindy Studios assets in here, but I'm also using an, another asset from the marketplace, the uh, Battle Royale template. If you're using the Battle Royale template, um, I've chosen to do this particular method because it makes more sense to me. But you can have the airplane where the, the plane's flying over and you jump out of the airplane and parachute down. I have that activated in here, but I don't have any maps that are using it right now. Because these are small maps. I like small, fast-paced maps anyway. Um, so you can choose to set it up to use the airplane deployment method or you can use the method that I'm using. Okay. Um, and I'll I'll show both way I'll show my way, but you also have the um, the big circle that, that collapses down onto the map and um, will actually start killing the players if they're not inside the circle. Just like any other battle royale game, you can set up that. I chose not to. Um, when you first start off, you're actually hidden over here on this little tiny island that I created just specifically for a starting spawn point. So you're sitting over here, your spawn's all over, you got blocking volumes all the way around it, you can't get out and do anything, you're trapped here until the battle starts. When the battle starts, everybody then gets teleported to random locations over here, and the fight's on. Whenever there's only one person left alive, the battle ends. Um, We'll just pan into buildings here. There's drinks around that'll give you stats, first aid kits. Um, uh, there's ammo. There's weapons. There's all kind of stuff scattered all over the freaking map. Backpack for carrying more items. The G36 there. Um, so you can fight and battle all around this map right here. I don't remember if I did or did not, but I think I was setting up those barrels to actually explode whenever they get shot. Um, so you're pretty much confined to the island, and you fight to the last man. And the other map that I'm using is the D-Day map from the World War II pack. Now, 
I didn't create the multiplayer system for joining and finding games and that kind of stuff. I didn't put that in there. That's not mine. Mine's a hell of a lot better than this one is in many ways, and I'll show you the actual downloaded version of how it looks. Um, but while this is compiling shaders, this is the D-Day map. Basically, I think you start way over there, hidden, and once the battle starts, you got random start locations all over this area, on the beach, on the battlefront here, over there in that city, a little town over there, or this little village. There's weapons and stuff scattered all over the place. Um, but hell, just the battle over here in the um, little town will be rough as hell because you've got two and three story buildings you can go into. It's still compiling shaders. But you see there's corpses laying on the ground with weapons to pick up. I don't know why a deal with a G36 was operating a Sherman, but yeah, whatever. You know. <laughs> I didn't change the weapons per map. But since nobody said they wanted me to keep working on this, I just quit working on it. This was something that somebody else wanted and then just kind of bucked right on off and I never saw him or heard him complain about anything again. So I'm going to let this go ahead and finish doing it shaders. Then I'll actually load up the actual playable game from my hard drive. Come on. So there's two maps, and multiple characters you can choose from on the character selection. Um, like I said, this one just happens to be the hiding in the lobby until everybody shows up, and then it actually starts. And if not enough people show up, you just, you can't even play with yourself there. And that's no bueno. I don't, nobody likes anything that keeps you from playing with yourself. Come on, traders, hurry the hell up. I got shit to do. Not really, but... I actually need to eat. I forget to eat sometimes. You'd think being an old fat guy, you know, I'd remember to eat, but yeah. And more often than that, I actually don't. So yeah, this is one of the two maps. So, it's free on my, my Discord. The link is on my Discord. Uh, it's called Fart Night because I don't like Fortnite. But you load it up. And like I said, if people want me to continue developing on this project, yeah, I will. But um, this is where it stands right now. It's fully functional and playable and everything else. Everything works. Gets nice background music. Said, I did not create this this system right here. This is from that other asset pack. It's like name. I don't want all this junkola on my name. So I can come over here, delete all that, set name. And it says it right there in yeah. Still some things that need to be fixed. But connected players. It'll show you how many people are connected. So you gotta enter your IP address and Join an IP, find game session, I'll search. And any fart knockers got one listed? No game found. Um, okay, so just put in your IP address, host game. You can choose to be everybody against everybody. You can do teams of two or squad of four. Um, minimum players, two. Max players, a hundred. Whether it's a land game or not, friendly fire, on or off, doesn't matter, but it's me, but then I'll go ahead and host game, host success. So now I can see if anybody else joins here. I don't, I, I like a good girl every now and then, but let's go ahead and change her character. I like this guy. Where is it? Um... Guy's not bad. We'll go with this guy. 
Yeah, a little bit. I started exploring some of the other stuff with... Um, oh, I didn't change the map. But you can actually change the map in that screen as well. Um, there's some plugins for UE4 that specifically say, you know, to, to give you some functionality for doing stuff with Amazon. Or Google, or, yeah. So you can see, waiting for players, whenever you're, you're waiting for other people to show up. Other people can join right now while I'm waiting. And, you know, whenever they join, they'll come in here and they'll get stuck. You can see you've got a nice little compass thing, too. Um, you know, whenever at least two people show up, one one other person shows up. i got to set the minimum of two. So if somebody else shows up right now, then after a short amount of time of also waiting to see if anybody else comes in, then it'll go ahead and go to the map. But I put out some shit like this, it's actually playable and working. Um, yeah, map, D-Day Beach, or Cinti Island. This is Fortnite. This is my clone. This is my my Cinti Studios inspired clone of Fortnite. And like I said, it's working. It, it's fine. But uh, if anybody wants me to, I'll change the uh, the multiplayer setup so that it uses my stuff instead of theirs. You punch people while you're waiting. If I had any weapons here, you could actually shoot people too, but. Yep, waiting for players right now. Of course, I did. I didn't change the uh, the IP address or anything, so I don't know if anybody can find it or not. But say, I, I I know my multiplayer setup works a lot more efficient for finding games. So if you get it downloaded and installed, well, it's not not any any real install. It's just a download. It's a development build. Let me actually go back to the lobby. Um, my name is set. Your host game solo. Two people. D Day Beach map. Now let's do the City Island map. Um, I don't have direct access to my IP with where my network's set up right now. Um, so like I said, I don't know if just hosting game right now. If you try to find my game right now and try to, to join me right now, then um, by hitting find game session without putting an IP in or anything, just find game session. I don't know if it works or not. So I've been asking since um, June for y'all... Y'all mofos to test this shit out and let me know if it works, or if I should put my multiplayer in here. Since June. Y'all don't love me, motherfuckers. Well, a little bit of testing that I've been able to do. Um... I know that the, the weapon pickups are there, the damage stuff was working. For a little bit of testing that I was doing before I kicked it all into full mode here. Oh, okay. So I'll hang out in the menu and see if you can find it this way, unless you try to host one. The, my multiplayer shit works so much easier. Yeah, it's not a very big download. It's been there, so, you know. Watching is one thing, but yet, being active on the Discord channel, too, is, is a little bit helpful to, 
to know what's going on, but that BBG demos page, I throw some stuff in there all the freaking time. And um, everything from working demos, try before you buy assets, you know, like, if you want to try out the uh, Cindy Studios assets, take a look at them, walk around, be the models, and that kind of stuff. You can download my stuff for free and walk around using my multiplayer template and the, the Steam stuff and everything and just play with your friends. Hey, I like Winwar. You know, if you guys don't like Winwar, you gotta say, hey, just use frickin' WinZip. You know, I've been using Winwar since frickin' ever. You know? <laughs> you guys gotta communicate with me. Like somebody who's never answered me back about whether or not the, um, the save game should, for the player inventory should be on the host or on the, on the server side or the client side. Going on two weeks since I asked that question and um, I've got a response so I quit working on that project. But I just got my new micrometer today and I'm gonna get my ass back into doing some, I actually got it yesterday, but um, 3D modeling for uh, 3D printing. I got a few things that I need to make, and I am really, really rusty at making 3D models. I want to make a knob for a 1948 stove that I've got. Tapping Visual Light Deluxe. Um, I've also got... Um, I want to do a USB extension system for my desk. I've got this crappy-ass desk that I got from Big Lots, probably frickin' 12 years ago, <laughs> or more, and I've still been using this same crappy little desk for that long. It just works. It's an L desk, L-shaped desk, and I don't use it as an L-shaped desk. I only use one section of it, the other section's just in here for a storage shelf. I don't use the, uh, the corner piece, or the angle piece. Back whenever I first got that bastard, it was holding a frickin' 17 or a 19 inch tube type monitor. Back whenever that thing was new, this desk was new. Alright, well, um, if we can get this to work, you know, we'll see if, if Chris here can, can get everything set up and running. We'll try it real quick and. If not, then I'll just, if you guys want me to, I will switch it out and run my multiplayer system. And it should be a lot easier to find games that way. And like I said, this project was for somebody else, and I haven't seen them in a month. And hell, I was working on a forum back in June, so, you know, I got this far, and, you know, they got this part, this version of this, not even the the actual project, because they, they own all the projects, too, and, and all the assets and all the stuff in here, and, yeah, hadn't seen them. So we'll see if you, once you get everything done, we'll see if you can, um, join. It should show you right here as connected players. Um, you can set your name. You can change your character. Um, now this should be the same as the one on, on itch.io. I'll have to verify though. Because I was trying to move everything over to itch.io and get it off of my Google Drive. Because I had too much stuff on my Google Drive account and I wanted to purge it so that I didn't have anything on my Google Drive except for my my personal stuff that I need to keep stored there. Any game demos and stuff like this should I need to get over on Itch. Itch.io, I've been putting things up for free and leaving it for donation to see if anybody is will you, you can still get it for free you can skip the donation but it prompts you to give a two dollar donation and 
only about three or four people have actually done the $2 donation. Actually, one person did $5. You can actually increase the amount if you want to. Um, but majority of people, they just want to get the shit for free and all that. My point was, if I'm going to put a game out, if I don't get feedback, now I'm not, not advertising my stuff anyway. But, like this right here, if people were interested in this, I would do a hell of a lot more with it. Hell, I'd spawn freaking dragons in here if that's what people wanted. I don't care, you know? But I don't keep working on projects that don't get enough interest. But then again, on top of that, I don't do enough self-publish. I need to spend some more time refining things and, and running this more like a business, I guess, instead of just a casual hobby. Where are we at, Chris? I thought everybody had frickin' um, WinRAR. But yeah, this should be the same one back and forth between HIO and Google Drive. Um, basically, he provided me You're on the same screen. Um, Try clicking on Find Game Session. Yeah, basically he provided me with the Battle Royale um, template, and he already owns all the, the same City Studios assets. And said, "Hey, can you get them all to work together?" And I'm like, ah, "Okay, sure, no problem." And he paid me a little bit of money, and off I went. And then it just vanished. Alright, well, if you can't find this session, if you've hit Find Game Session and it came back saying that it no, um, not able to find anything, then, um, let me do this. Find... It's already created one. There's no game found. Because I've had a low level now, it's going to actually go into and actually start playing. You see, this is why I don't like other people's online shit, because it just doesn't work. Alright, well, um, let me exit back to the lobby. And you create one, click on host game. Pick solo, change minimum players to two. And just, just, just check with me on Discord. Change the, the map if you want to, but whenever you, you click on that, change your options here. Leave it solo and minimum players too. And then click on, you can change your character too, but and then click on host game. It says host successful, you know. So once it says host successful, then um, I'll just do... I'll do the searching for game. I might probably have to go in here... And, he said... Go back to the lobby. So I'm back to this. See, even if I don't do anything, it should find a game session. See, and that's why I don't like other people's crap. It's just not working. I don't know... I didn't do any of the, the multiplayer connection stuff. If I, if I inject my stuff in here, I'll replace this whole part right here with my stuff. And I'll keep the, the character creation, the set the player name, but I'll put the Steam functionality in and it should work a hell of a lot better. running the advanced session stuff. Because 
we've tried, you know, using with with my my Steam stuff, we've actually played the um, we did the the build um, example and yeah, the building demo. We knew that that one worked. Um, we never did get together and do the uh, the other one. Um, yeah, no game pal. Yeah, so just um, if you guys are interested in that, then I'll I'll actually go through and and redo with my stuff and actually make it work. I know my stuff works. Um. Like the the building demo, and then the um, one we were doing. Survival game get yeah that's what I'm, I was thinking about. Um, where in the hell is it? I, I thought I had a playable version already set up. Uh, what the hell did I call it though? Build demo. What the hell did I call it? <laughs> um, the survival game kit with my multiplier stuff in it. Well, I want to go with the um, the epic um, stuff as well, but um, yeah, it's not like epic is making it easy for anyone to um, to do that. I thought I changed the frickin' map on this version. I mean, I I want to be able to go in different different directions. I don't want to be stuck with Steam only, but the Steam shit works. Um, or was it this one? I would love to be able to to just do standalone and just say hey here it is no steam functionality whatsoever needed um, but the main difference is when you're talking about the um, single player um, creating your session and doing everything in blueprints wise you know uh, this is the old version Yeah, this one works too, but this is the old version. This one didn't have a um, save game in it. Um, I'll look into the uh, the Amazon thing, but what I'm saying about the um, the online capabilities is. Um, Oh, it doesn't matter which project I go into, as long as it's got my multiplayer template in there. Or at least the advanced sessions already in it. Uh, yes or no? I mean, there might be ways of doing it other ways, too. There's, um... So yeah, with the um, advanced session stuff, I'm just going to create a temporary widget. Um, 
of if you do create session a regular create session from the epic we'll see with doing the steam method the only thing you've got to use C++ for you don't even use anything for it you have one compiled file and the rest for dedicated server but other than that you don't need to worry about it but that the whole thing right here create session this is the standard UE4 create session this is the information you have player controller the number of connections and whether it's a LAN game or not that's all you got to work with um, Um, let's see. Advanced friendly stuff. Um, yeah, you can pull up with the um, advanced session stuff. You can actually tr um, pull in like um, Steam avatars for your friends. Um, you could actually invite friends from your friends list directly inside the game. You can get the Steam unique names and everything else and. Um, treat. Where is it? Create advanced session. Yeah, create advanced session. So, what would you rather use? This right here with uh, create a session. Okay, it's it's there on success. We we're playing, or create an advanced session, where you can pick and choose your own advanced settings, like map name, um, you know, whatever information you want to put in there. Um, sure you have your player controller that's the same public connections okay that's the same private connections secure with a, a uh, password um, allow invites is it a dedicated server or not um, use presence uh, I haven't really investigated that but um, anti-cheat protection uses stats should advertise um, yeah you got more stuff you can work with then here I'm creating a session it's there or creating an advanced session and actually having all this extra information I mean if you you look at um, under session you got um, once you've created the session then you can check things like max players ping server name things like that but who cares you you can't set the server name you can create the session but you can't give it a name there's no way to give it a name with using a standard create session the standard epic version you cannot provide that using blueprints that is you cannot use this and set up a a name under your extra settings you can actually um um, add or modify you could um, you know get extra settings you can get session results you can do um, just a, a here, compile please please compile and save um, in my shit here the um, extra settings like this is all you get to see on a create advanced session. Um, some of you already have this anyway, so it's not like a big deal, but whoever doesn't have it, I don't want to show all my shit here. Um, like server name to use. I'm, I'm creating that as a new property for the extra settings. So whenever I, I hit the thing to... Uh, do, 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 to... menu box that's fine create server all right so whatever you're making your server name you enter this information right here and it automatically whenever you hit enter or you type in the name hit hit enter it automatically commits that information right there to server name to use and the literal session property string is called game name so I can actually plug that information in and whenever you you are trying to find um, 
a, a server and there is a server available it's going to show up with a join button here the name of the server right here and the newer version um, it's actually pinging it through a Steam server and the way that this is actually working is it uses a unique Steam app ID that is a development app ID uh, which is generic. It's going to show up as, you know, if I look at um, Steam, if I want to play what games I've played recently, Space War. Space War is the the game name that will come up for me playing anything with this system because I don't have my own unique Steam app ID. Once you pay them to publish your game on Steam, you get a number and you actually have to go in there and replace in your project settings actually go to your your hard drive to your project settings um, your config folder uh, let's see is this right file here yeah you'll have to go into the default engine uh, dot ini and change steam dev app id number 480 is the, currently the one that's a steam developer app id you would actually replace this with your correct steam app id that's how that works it's actually routing through steam and and allowing you to find and host games versus if I just do a create session, okay, where am I creating it to? Where where on the planet is this information holding its hand up saying, I'm creating a session, here's my session, come find me. Well, okay, how do you find it? Okay, find session. This is how Epic wants you to find your session. Who is it pinging? How does this work? How does it find that session that I've created with this this node right here? You create your session with this node right here. How do I find you? Do I go door to door knocking on everybody's freaking IP address saying, hey, are you, do you have a session? No? Okay go to the next house uh, um, hey do you have a session uh, no okay so, so this has to be routing through epic somehow if you noticed but um, if you're doing shit from time to time if you look down here you'll have some funky yellow and black looking icon that's their swarm that's their what are you doing with our shit now Oh, you're doing this? Okay, thank you. They're downloading and basically your what you're doing. They're they're downloading your log files. And seeing what you've been doing with the program. So this is standard session stuff, create and find. Um Find session advanced. So this is the uh, the plugin that I'm using. The advanced sessions plugin gives me this versus that. So advanced sessions or normal sessions. Well, if you look at your um, plugins, see I'm using the advanced sessions plugins there as part of default. But um, search for built-in Amazon, online subsystem Amazon, right there. Um, as I remind everybody, look at your shit, man. There's there's plugins for all kind of stuff that's built in. Windows M Movie Player. Um, web Browser. That's a fun one to play with. That's one how I was using the um, YouTube video inside my frickin' widget. You can throw that widget into the map, but you have no way of setting a friggin' sound attenuation on it. Virtual camera. Check some of these shit out, you know? It's a beta version, but what the hell does virtual camera do? 
USD importer? Is it like a US dollar importer? That'd be cool. How about an exporter? I want to export the money. Um, yeah, there's all kind of freaking thing. I mean, how if you, you type in Steam. Online subsystem Steam. Right there. Steam Audio, Steam Controller plugin, Steam VR. You know. But with the advanced session stuff, the reason why I like using it is that there's so much more you can do versus the standard Epic version. And to me, this shit should be built into Unreal Engine 4 straight up. Um, you know, you still got to get a reference to the player controller, but um, max results, you can increase how many, you know, whether it's LAN or not. Server types, client servers only, dedicated servers only, empty servers only. Oh, I'm sorry, you can, you can change the uh, search type for the three different types, all servers or client server only, which is what I'm usually using. You can set up filters. So when you're trying to find it, um, you can break down this information here uh, from your extra settings and create your own custom filters for uh, setting up your, your finds a game. So if you want to create your own filters list with a checkbox saying filter only servers that are secure, or non-empty servers only, or empty servers only, or minimum slots available. If me and you want to go play on somebody else's server, do they have at least three slots available, or two slots available, or whatever? So you can actually build your own filter list for what you want to find on your session. And then you can output that into your, your widget. So, to me, this is very limiting. Um, you can either you can create a session and you can find a session, um, but you can't create those extra settings like map name, um, server name, uh, host name, whatever. I mean, you could do a lot more with the advanced session. And to me, this shit should be built into the Unreal Engine Four instead of this simple little stuff here. I mean. Just typing in session alone. Create, start, da, 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 get server name. I mean, that's not even available. Get ping in milliseconds. Yeah, these are, are available for that, but just update session. Get unique um, properties like session ID. Um, I have to make sure, like, this is session info. If I go to a project that doesn't have my Steam set up in here with the advanced sessions, you have to go through here and it's like get extra settings. And that's for this. So I actually would be creating my extra settings. But you can make literal... Yeah. I'm not going to get into it because, like I said, this is um, all part of my menu system. It's already built in and working extra settings. You can make an array, make literal session property string server name to use, and that's creating a game name. Um, so now if I want to, I can add that into um, Sorry, I keep pulling things from one screen to the next. The latest version of the the simple multiplayer team template. It's, it's not 100% finished yet, but... Putting this in here for creating... hosting a game. So, we go to host. You can actually... You'll have a scroll list right here. I've only got three maps in here, but if there was more, you'd actually see a scroll bar. But you can put in your server name, you can actually change the map name, things like that. Um, when you're finding it, you're now going to see um, the join button still. You'll see the server name, and you'll also see what the map name is of what the server is playing on. 
So if I'm hosting and I'm using Lobby Map, you'll see that I'm playing the Lobby Map. Um, single player, you know, when you want to play with yourself, you can pick which map you want to go. Level 2, launch game. Deep, I'm on level 2. So I just have some some visibility issues I'm trying to I'll, I'll have to finish up on but you got some good functionality shit works I'm gonna get out of here I'm hungry it's 11.30 almost and I've gotta be up at 7 o'clock actually no, I have to be somewhere at 7.15 in the morning which means I've gotta get up around 6 o'clock in the morning and yeah, I'm not going to be up till 6 o'clock in the morning like I usually am if I have to get up at that time. So I'm going to eat something and I'm going to um, get back to working on my 3D modeling because i got to relearn how to 3D model again. I haven't done it in years and I'm not used to the new software of today versus 10, 15 years ago. We will see you guys later. Have fun. Catch me on Discord.